Reflecting God's Glory Isaiah, he pronounced from time to time that salvation would come to the world through Israel and their Messiah. In that day, the root of Jesse, that's Jesus, who will stand as a signal for the peoples, of him shall the nations inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. Now, Isaiah, he foresaw redemption. Well, redemption from what? Creation would be redeemed through Israel. Israel? Now, let me explain how Israel is related to God himself in all of history. Isaiah, he called the people of Israel to arise, to shine. Why? The light from the Lord would shine on them. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. At that time, after the Israelites came back from exile, Isaiah called them to come and respond to God. He, what did he expect them to do? Well, to have faith in God and to walk in a spirit-filled life, the gift that God had given to those who have faith in him as their Savior. And a Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who turn from transgression, declares the Lord. And as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit that is upon you and my words that I have put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth or out of the mouth of your offspring or out of the mouth of your children's offspring, says the Lord, from this time forth and forevermore. Isaiah, he also foresaw that the son of David, that's Jesus, that he would be satisfied with the atonement that he accomplished through his death in saving those who the Father long ago had elected before the foundation of the earth. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. Out of the anguish of his soul he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Isaiah, he did not know which people which people that God would give faith to. Who are God's elect? Isaiah didn't know. So Isaiah, he preached to all people. Isaiah knew that the Spirit would make faith in some of them, those who are God's elect. And how would this faith happen? Well, it's through the preaching of the word and through the giving of faith. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Isaiah, he had confidence, faith, that the faithful remnant, that they would believe the Lord's glory would shine upon them. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. Those faithful people of Israel who believe and receive the Spirit, they will reflect God's glory, and they will shine. They will shine so brightly that even the people of other nations will see, and later on God will accept them too. All the flocks of Keter shall be gathered to you. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister to you. They shall come up with acceptance on my altar, and I will beautify my beautiful house. Well, what does that mean? Well, Isaiah, he foresaw that the people from other nations, that they would come to the Messiah, including the Gentiles. 
and they would serve Israel's God. They would serve him and they would also, they would bring their wealth to honor him, their silver and their gold. Who are these that fly like a cloud and like doves to their windows? For the coastlands shall hope for me, the ships of Tarshish first, to bring your children from afar, their silver and gold with them, for the name of the Lord your God and for the Holy One of Israel, because he has made you beautiful. You know, all these details, the things that Isaiah foresaw, they've come true. A long time ago, Jews like Mary and Nicodemus and Peter, Thomas, Paul, and, and many more Jewish people, they believed that Jesus was reflecting his glory. And that's shown all around the world. And now there are many Gentile believers all around the world. And they serve Israel. Not the nation of Israel, no. So who is Israel? Israel is Jesus. Jesus himself is the true Israel. At that time, Israel, that's God, that's Jesus, since 2,000 years ago. Now let's apply this to our Christian life. Salvation that Isaiah predicted, it's been fulfilled around the world and it continues to be fulfilled constantly. And many of us Gentiles that Isaiah predicted would become believers has happened. And we're still waiting for one day when there will be no need for the sun or for the moon. Why would we not need them? Well, the Lord himself, he is the light that we need to shine. The sun shall be no more your light by day, nor for brightness shall the moon give you light, but the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun shall no more go down, nor your moon withdraw itself, for the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of mourning shall be ended. The new heaven will have peace, everlasting peace. It will be given to all of those who are in Christ. You know, a long time ago, the cities, they needed to have walls, fortresses built to protect themselves from their enemies. In the future, the new earth, will there be enemies? No. It will only be peace forever. And right now, we need to pray for that day to come. You know, I said that we should pray for that day to come. Why should we pray for that? Do we need to pray? Oh, yes. God commands prayer. But, you know, God's already planned everything, and it's going to come together, be successful in the end. So why pray? What for? Well, I have a video. Does prayer really matter to God? I'd like you to watch. It's voiced also. It'll tell you more about it. Quorum Dio. <laughs> 